Hello everybody and welcome to another Hi-Fi special presented here from the lounge with my friend James Dean at DB Hi-Fi. Uh, the first video went down a storm and I'm really thankful to everybody who watched and commented because actually we were really happy with it. So I'm going to do just a few of these videos a year. It's not going to be a really particularly regular segment. Just showing off something else that I like, which isn't cars. And I am hoping that later on this year, we'll actually be able to have a little sort of informal car meet barbecue slash stereo show off some point in a few months time. I'd like suggestions for a name for such an event. The best I've come up with so far is turbos and tweeters, but I'm sure we can do better than that. So um, suggestions on a postcard, if you please. Now, today's video is going to be divvied up into a few different sections and at the end I'm going to be telling you how you can win one of these beautiful Dali Catch portable Bluetooth speakers worth about 300 quid because I've recently bought two of these one of which we are going to be giving away thanks to James and DB Hi-Fi and also Dali themselves who it turns out are really good sports and like the channel. So we're going to be talking today about rooms we're going to be talking a little bit about speakers, then components, cables, and then rounding up and signing off. So let's begin with the room, because one of the things a lot of people mention is the fact that this room has no treatment in it. A lot of people talk about room treatment. What does that mean? Well, it means putting things on the wall or floor or ceiling or wherever it needs to be in order to stop unwanted reflections, because the idea is you want the sound to come from your sound source only that's not always the case and the thing with hi-fi like cars is there is a certain amount of objectivity versus subjectivity and, and room treatment is a somewhat divisive topic alongside cables you will be able to sort of technically improve your sound with some room treatment but james doesn't have any in here for a couple of good reasons firstly he tends to prefer the sound of a room without it and if a room is producing some sort of unwanted harmonics or distortion that's a problem in the room and there should be better ways of correcting it sometimes with different placement of your speakers and things like that and there are a lot of ways to approach it secondly a lot of people simply don't like the aesthetics of room treatment and if he's presenting people things they're considering buying what he wants is a space that's sort of fairly representative of a real world scenario so this space in here represents pretty much a, a, a medium to large sized lounge that's the kind of environment people are going to use to listen in it's not a perfect space it has thin windows over there it's a reasonably irregular shape which is actually helpful so that's why this room doesn't have too much in the way of treatment in it you can of course do that if you like but i have heard stereo systems in rooms that have been fully treated and honestly they can wind up sounding just a little dry for my tastes and now a quick look at a few speakers and no we aren't going to be playing any today in fact a lot of people commented on the previous video that they really wanted to hear the system but it's my firm belief that there's only one way you're ever going to hear this stuff properly and that's in person i really don't understand how you could ever get a sense of what a stereo system is like by listening to it through a microphone through your stereo system that just seems a little bit odd to me but we have here a trio of very very nice speakers at three different price points now i've just treated myself actually to a set of dali epicon sixes those are very very nice indeed the epicon range is dali's top level speaker you get everything from the little epicon 2 up to the epicon 8 the one i've got is the one in the middle it's the sort of entry level floor standard of that range the reason I've gone for that, A, I couldn't afford the Epicon 8, and B, the room that I use is a lot smaller than this one, so I just don't need a bigger speaker. It'll probably create a lot more problems than it would actually solve. At Dali, you're also doing a bit of a special at the moment, so if you trade in anything, they're going to give you 20% off an Epicon. So if you want a good deal on a really very nice Danish speaker, um, do give James at DB Hi-Fi a call. I went for the Ruby Makassar finish. Normally, I would just go black gloss on all my speakers. I'm very, very boring like that. And as I want to build a home cinema system, and that's sort of what I'm using now, I didn't want white, which is one of the alternative finishes. I just, these are lovely. Wood speakers are lovely, but it's not my kind of taste. But the Ruby Makassar is stunning. 10 layers of lacquer they put on that thing. And honestly, you've got to see it to believe it, but it's really, really nicely made. And let's face it, does it matter that a speaker looks good? 
Yeah, I think it does, because if you're spending that amount of money, I don't want it to look cheap and nasty, and I do spend a lot of time looking at them. And they're very nice things to look at. So what do we have here? Well, the cheapest one is actually this chappy in the center. This is a Martin, it's a Swedish brand, and this is an Oscar Trio. So this is under 10,000 pounds, this speaker. It's pretty potent. It's actually quite compact as well. You can put it in a, a reasonably good space. As you can see, this sort of, you technically call it a bookshelf speaker, is actually slightly taller and a bit wider too, especially when you take into account the bass, which is pretty chunky. The Martin's one of these brands that I've gotten to know because of James and all the many things that he deals with. And there are quite a few brands out there I'd never heard of, but now that I've listened to their product, uh, they're pretty cool. There are some hi-fi brands I think everyone's familiar with. Name, Bowers and Wilkins, uh, Meridian, especially us car people will we'll know them from that. But there's a lot of cool stuff out there which is somewhat lesser known. And I think if you're into this kind of thing, well worth listening to. I've always enjoyed in the car world doing stuff that's a little bit forgotten and in the hi-fi world, the same thing. There are some real gems out there if you know where to look. Now to the left here, we have a TAD CE1, that's the Compact Evolution 1. So there are three speakers, I believe, in this lineup. You've got the ME1, the Micro Evolution, and then above this, you've got the E1, which is a floor stander. I'd never heard of TAD either until I met James, and this is my favorite speaker ever. James got these in, and these are, probably, these are more than these. So this is over, just over 20,000 pounds, depending on the finish that you go for. This is in wood, I've seen them in piano black. They used to do some special editions with some amazing artwork on the side here, but, and those I really love, but I don't believe they make them anymore. I couldn't believe, this is a large room, and this is not a huge speaker. I couldn't believe the sound that came out of these. These are honestly, if one day I have an opportunity to build like a dream you know, two channel setup just for you know a, a smoking room or whatever, uh, this is what's going in there. Those are phenomenal, really, really cool. But if you absolutely have to fill a big room with a lot of sound, you could do worse than these. These are, as you might have guessed it, more money again, about 36,000 pounds. These are Martin Parker, no, they're not Martin Parker, they are Martin Parker. These are the Oscars, these are the Parkers. These are Martin Parker Quintet Diamond Edition. Uh, getting used to hi-fi lineups and things, as you can probably tell, is taking me a little bit of time, but I am uh, getting there. Some manufacturers you'll find will have a broad range of products over quite a few different levels. Others don't tend to do that so much. Sometimes the gap can be quite large, but this is again another area where having a very good friend who knows what he's talking about does come in quite handy. So these are pretty serious. In fact, you've not only got uh, four large woofers and one tweeter at the front, hence it's called a quintet, but you've also got four passive radiators on the back. The diamond edition gets a, a diamond tweeter and it has Yorma statement cabling inside. So we talked about cables a little bit before. Well, this uses very fancy cables inside it to try and improve the sound quality. And finally, let's get down to ground level and talk about a few of the components that James has. As you can probably guess, I'm kind of just giving you the absolute basics of what these are because what I'm hoping from this video is merely just to, to pique some interest. And if you want to know more about anything in particular, do let us know. Either if you want to buy something, give James a call, or if you're just curious, please comment down below and we'll try and talk more in a future video. Now we were hoping for this episode to have a very nice vinyl deck here to show you all. And indeed we do have the deck, but not all the pieces that we need to make it run. So the next episode I'm hoping we're gonna actually focus purely on vinyl, because I know a lot of people really, really still love vinyl. I've never really been that big into it. Mostly I think because I don't really have a vinyl collection to listen to, but I know a lot of people are. So we are not ignoring analog lovers. So in no particular order, we have here on the bottom, a couple of components from a French company called YBA, uh, so named for its founder, Yves B.A. These components represent two of YBA's lineups. So the YBA range, and they produce pretty much electronics, goes uh, design at the bottom, which is their really sort of entry level stuff. Then heritage, of which we featured a couple of items uh, last time round. And so the heritage stuff, is kind of like a thousand odd pounds a box, um, really good quality stuff. Looks in fact very much the same as their top end stuff, which is quite a bit more. You then have Genesis and you then have Passion. I've actually recently just acquired a, a Passion pre-power X demo from James that I'm now using to drive my setup at home and it does sound rather good. So this 
as you might imagine, it's a CD player, but it's quite funky because it's top loading and you can actually play the CD with the lid open. In fact, they recommend that you do that because it reduces the air pressure inside and it helps with vibration. Ultimately, a CD plays in a very similar manner to a vinyl. You are reading grooves in a disc just by a different method, a laser rather than an actual needle sort of feeling its way through. So you want to make sure you minimize all of the vibration as much as you can. In fact, maybe in a future demo, we might talk a little bit about racking more because that's something that is very, very important again. And a lot of people in Britain in particular don't actually tend to spend a lot of money on racks. I've just bought a new Atacama rack uh, for my setup at home. And once that's in, I will show you what it is that I actually listen to myself because I know a lot of you are interested. Um, so this is available. This is less than 3000 pounds. And this is a very, very cool piece of kit. Next door to this, we have something from YBA's Passion lineup, which sits above the Genesis and just below their top end signature range. This is a Passion integrated amp, the IA350. Integrated, pretty much meaning you've got basically everything in the box. Now, I've actually just bought myself a Passion Pre Power. So that's more or less all the pieces in here, but separated into two boxes. That means it does the job with more accuracy and also the amplifier section is a lot more potent. For most small rooms though, and simple setups, this would do pretty much everything you need. This combined with this, with a pair of say, uh, Dali speakers at a, a few thousand pounds would be a phenomenal uh, two channel system. So this is four and a half thousand pounds and you can plug pretty much everything into it and then straight to speakers. If you're looking for a really simple system, it's an excellent way to do it. And then on the top shelf, we have something appropriate for the top shelf. We have something a little bit more, um, <clears throat> obscene. This is an MSB amp, the S202, a stereo power amplifier. So you can't use this on its own. You need a pre-amplifier of some sort to work with it. Uh, this actually could do the job if need be, but usually you'd have a dedicated preamp and you'd have a separate DAC, of which we have one here. Uh, this is an incredible piece of just machinery, I guess. It's an all billet case and it takes 14 hours to CNC machine this thing. And it puts out 200 watts into eight ohms, which doesn't sound like a huge amount of power, but believe me when I say that wattage ratings with amplifiers seems a little bit less definitive than you'd think. I've heard amplifiers that have only, you know, a few watts of output and they sound incredible and they can really, really punch. And then you get others which say they put out hundreds and hundreds of watts and actually they're just nasty. This is going to drive most things you can imagine. And if you are going to go and buy speakers like these big Martens, this is kind of the thing people would usually use to drive them. Certain speakers do tend to be kind of power hungry. The, the Martens are. Certain speakers are more efficient. You can get away with a little bit less grunt. But yeah, this thing, about 30,000 quid. And, and next to it, we have a piece of Tad's Electronics. Now, not all companies that make speakers make electronics and vice versa, but Tad do. This is their Evolution Series DAC, and last time I mentioned that you can get bargains on X-Demo Kit. Uh, this is one of those. So the retail price of this is £11,500, and if somebody's out there looking for a pretty serious piece of electronic trickery, uh, yeah, yours for six and a half grand. So um, somebody please come and buy it before I do. Uh, yeah, so that's nearly there, but of course, before we go, there are a couple of important things we need to talk about. First up, cables. In the last video, I showed you an example of a Yorma Origo cable to show you how much you can kind of spend on these things if you want. And many people very quick to point out that surely a 9,000 pound cable is going to sound the exact same as a coat hanger because the internet's told them so. Well, here's the thing about cables. It's an area of great debate. And I will happily tell you, there are lots and lots of cables where you would just be wasting your money. James would happily tell you there are lots and lots of cables out there which would just be wasting your money. They're seriously overpriced. They don't really help anything at all. In fact, in some cases, they can make things a little bit worse. I understand all the theory of it, but I also understand that one time I came around here for a demo and a gentleman from a cable company was showing off what his different cables do. Well, he changed out one cable for another and the second was double the price of the of the first one i couldn't really hear a difference at all he then put said cable on some small little wooden riser blocks so it was no longer touching the floor and i heard a difference 
I don't know. I don't know how just lifting a cable off the floor is going to make such a big difference, but it really did, more so than actually just changing the cable. Now, I've heard lots of different cables, and some of them, yeah, do yield a really tangible improvement. But here's the best thing about cables. It's a win-win situation because if you don't believe that expensive cables are worth your money, you don't have to buy any. James is certainly going to be very happy to sell you £30,000 amplifier, £30,000 pair of speakers, and then you can put, you know, £5 Amazon basic speaker cable between them. If that's what you want to do, if that's what you feel is the best, great. On the other hand, if you come here and you listen to stuff and you go, actually, yeah, no, that, that cable really does make an improvement. Excellent, even better, you've just made your system better again. And as mentioned in the first video, it's really, really, really important to make sure that you keep everything kind of in check. You know, there's no point going and spending 10 grand on cabling when the rest of your system is only worth five. That, of course, would be stupid. But, uh, you know, cabling, very interesting, very divisive topic. In fact, I think maybe more divisive than anything I've done with cars, actually. So, there's only one thing remaining for me to do here before I say goodbye, that's tell you what you need to do to win yourself one of these beautiful Daily Catch Bluetooth speakers worth about 300 quid. They give you 24 hours, once you've charged it, of actually pretty damn good sound. Considering the, the, the size of this thing, it's a really, really great product. And it should tell you everything you need to know that this is the kind of stuff that James often deals with, and yet this is still one of his favorite things. I have two, one of which I'm keeping because I paid for it, and the other you can have. But because I'm a nice person, you can choose which color you prefer. And uh, this is a, a worldwide thing. But because there are a lot of regulations around giveaways on YouTube, I can't just say, comment down below, and I'll pick someone at random. That's not good enough. So I need to make it a little bit more difficult for you to win. Here's what we're gonna do. And this only is gonna to work today, the day that this video is released. You need to go onto Instagram. Sorry if you don't have it, but I'm trying to get more followers there. Go onto Instagram. Make sure that you follow me, that's important. I'm gonna put up a story today and it's only gonna last 24 hours. So once the story's gone, the chance has disappeared. If you're watching this a couple of years down the line, please check the release date of this video, because this may be gone. Uh, and what you need to do, There'll be a question you have to answer on the story. But the question is this, because I'm telling you people because you've been good for watching the video. What are the three Alfa Romeos that I've owned? There is a video which will tell you everything that you need to know. And I want you to answer the question on the Instagram story with the three Alfa Romeos that I've owned. The people that get it right, I'll put into a list and I will get somebody that is gonna be genuinely impartial to pick a name from a hat and I'll get in touch with you so long as when I go to message you, I see that you have followed me because if you haven't, I will give it to somebody else. So that's what you need to do. Get on Instagram, find my story, tell me the three Alfa Romeos that I have owned. And that is it. Another little look at some cool, funky hi-fi equipment. Uh, thanks to James for being a good sport, lending me many, many cars over the year. This is my small way of saying thank you to him. Thank you all for watching. If there's anything more hi-fi related you, you want to know, let me know. And um, in the next episode, back to cars. Bye-bye.